Now, where are these monitors from? Those are my I'm going to look it up while those, uh, those guys are finishing yeah. up. I have Paul's um, monitor we're giving him, and I have uh, his 500 we're giving him when you see, if you see Paul. Okay, cool. Cool. Yeah, I'm sure. And the access the database. He wants, he wants a 2000 motherboard. Do I have documentation of how to use Windows class? Oh, I'm sure you do. Um, I don't know if I do. It's kind of a pretty big area. He already has the case because I gave him the case. Anyway, but you have to use window, window class. It's like one of the first oh, things. He also wants a 3000 tower. Well, you're not forced, forced we don't but have it, it really hurts if you don't. Box. I've tried. And uh, there is a 3000 part of the case that he wanted on his list. And the other thing he wants is the 12. I don't think I have window so. class. We, we have a robo, but we don't have any documented anyway. Like sure, that's not true. Not, not in a nice so form. As far as the autodox is pretty good. The autodox is pretty good. I, I worked Charles, on that for a long time. Thanks to the mm. guys before oh. as well. Um, is that Utility library? Right utility library? Right Z2, Z3. Which one? I think it's Z1. No. He's here. He's here. Oh, it's incredible. So I have yet to configure that properly. <laughs> <laughs> we can try to help with that tonight. Oh, okay. yeah, exactly. Bring your stuff tonight. I have it in the car. Oh, cool. That's right. You just yeah. said that. Sorry. I can't. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. No coffee. Um, coffee? No, no coffee. No, there is coffee. <laughs> coffee. And um, I don't know. I just haven't had it yet. Oh, I even had an article on it. <laughs> <laughs> you did something on it? What? Apparently. What do you do? Look at that. Yeah, that's all there. <laughs> I just don't want to be doing this again. Uh, I'd rather, I'd rather have some okay. So you have some to share. And then I also have the other dogs. When we get back, there'll be plenty of unloading. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. What's that? That's a bad Mike Fall. I'll spit that all that garbage. I'll let Mike Fall the way. Tommy, Mike. Really? It goes away for a bit. Oh, you don't have technical problems. Oh, you like the ignorance. Yeah. Ignorant me. Oh, all right. Yeah. Yeah. It was. It was. I learned my lesson on those long ago. And I want to see the entire compile line every time. Every time. Every source module. Every time. 150 source modules. It's going on and on and on. I, I want to see every one. Well, I always give it. Don't you pipe it out to a text file so you can wrap through it for things? Sometimes. That's what I do. Yeah. Or you just pipe it. Otherwise, although sometimes if I've got like an old monitor or a terminal, it's nice so it can spit it out so it looks like something impressive is happening. I do that in my office sometimes, <laughs> right? So I'll be I'll be sitting there on my laptop. You're not recording, right? I moves. You want me to delete again? No, no, no. Oh, I'm just kidding around. It's okay. Oh. <laughs> Twilight twice, fitness twice. No, I'm good. It's all good. Life is good. What is that tag called? Which which one are you looking for? If I knew the name, I would have found it by now. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what does it do? Uh, just a second. I'll find it. Okay. <laughs> is he playing? It's something to do with defer. Oh, maybe it's in layout. You know? I don't, maybe it's not in window class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you you got to go to uh, the layout. It's, library. it's the defer. Which, can I ask a question? Context. Why do we something. have the separate. So you. Why do I have to create a layout? So I create, I create a, I create a window, right? And I, I instantiate a window using window class. I create that object. Then I have to create a layout, and then I have to put everything in the layout. So why is that necessary? Because you have to specify somewhere which buttons on top of what, button and uh, you want an image over Right. But why is why why does intuition need a layout gadget? Isn't that kind of what intuition is supposed to be for? No, with the layout gadget. It's no. Just, it's the layout gadget a, is supposed to It's just a class overhead all the other gadgets, that's all. That's yeah. all it is? Yeah. Okay. So the window has a single gadget. Right, that's, the layout yeah, gadget, that's right. Which expands to all the others. Okay, and all right, I just was kind of curious as to why we needed that extra layer of gadget. There's another one. Uh, 
called a group. Group gadget? I've never even seen this before. It's internal to intuition. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's another one that's uh, eh, kind of similar goals, but um, kind of groups gadgets together in a cluster. And I don't think it does layout so much, does it? Uh, well, yeah, it does. It renders all of them as a group. Before Boopsy was introduced, was there no concept of the layout library? Everything was hard coded accordingly. Okay. The first version of intuition was specific Cartesian coordinates for everything. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That, those are. Have you seen the screenshots of the A1000 preferences screen? I don't it's think so. Scary. <laughs> I don't think so. I've seen. I mean, I've seen. I've seen Ugly. OS1 stuff. Sort of that blue, white, orange. Thing. Yeah, blue, white, orange, black, and uh, buttons specifically in certain areas, and nothing can move, nothing can resize. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. That was the first first cut. Wow, I didn't realize how primitive uh, the GUI system was on the Amiga initially. There's still it's still on the wiki. That mm. that uh, material. So in theory, I mean, in theory, you could, if you wanted to, you could still do that. You still can. I can't yeah. imagine anybody wanting to, but well, people do strange things. Hello. Uh, off the wall question. Are they gonna? Is the community uh, gonna uh, develop any LP6 drivers for modern printers, like laser jets and stuff? Develop which drivers? L LP6. What is LP6? Um, <laughs> so like, uh, like your laser jets, like your uh, Hewlett Packards, um, your newer printers. You mean PCL6? Yeah. There we go. Thank you. Oh, oh. PCL. Yeah. Oh. Okay. I get it backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, I don't know. I don't see why. No. I mean, the the last person who did anything in that area wrote the you know, the photo smart driver. That stuff. And that's, that's like a PCL three level, or yeah. PCL three or PCL five driver. Um, yeah. And it, it does work, kind of. Um, a lot of the HP printers though have post print emulation. Well, the one uh, I use. Well, I use the three thousand, and I also use the more. Okay. And there's. There's nothing really you can use modern hardware for printer-wise without having to buy it. Oh, well, I just use the PostScript stuff. That's the PostScript. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have an HP and I use PostScript to work. Yeah. yeah, but not all the post, not all the H, oh, not, sorry, not all the HP okay. printers have PostScript. That's true. That's true. Yeah. One yeah, of the things true. about these machines is that um, <laughs> it's amazing how many printers they do work with. Right. But you can only use. <laughs> right, right, right. And the other thing with the Postgres drivers is it's kind of limited because it's it was back in the day when you know, your density you only want to kind of DPI and black and white and the turbo print. Turbo print actually is amazing. Yeah. What turbo actually turbo that would be a pretty good product, like the turbo print thing, but a one for all is for one now. Oh yeah, I think somebody did approach. Even was it even just like what they call themselves Zito Soft or whoever took over for the turbo. Print product for Linux. Oh, you know, I never followed them actually. Somebody, somebody approached them and asked them if they were interested in, in, in a, uh, opening up their code for a private developer so that he could create a port and then they would get the money. And yeah, yeah. They weren't interested. Okay. Yeah. Which well, is a shame because Turbo Print for Linux is a really good product. That's odd. Why would you? Because it's just kind of gathered dust. I don't know. I, I don't really know. They okay. just said, listen, you know, we're not interested, and if you want turbo print from the Amiga, go over to this old journey. I don't know. I, I, ever since I switched to PostScript printers, I've never had Yeah, I've never had that. Well, we I, we still have the Office Jet. And it works really, really well with the third party photo smart driver and with the, I um, uh, can't remember which HP uh, driver I use in the turbo print. But you have the, both work really the well. same problem with other platforms. Like, uh, why, why not to the same, not to the same. The old Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. You know, it, Nothing works and, and, and until I switch to PostScript and then everything worked. I had every platform. Somebody worked. also did something yes. where they set up a print server yes. with a, like a Raspberry Pi. Yes. So it's running a cup server. Yes. That's another right. way. And then you can use IPQ.device yeah. to connect to that. Yes, right. that's another way. That actually works really, really well. Yeah. I, I haven't set that up yet. But that yeah. opens you up to anything that can support. Then you get rid of the driver problem. It completely the problem yep. goes away. And the other thing is, is that uh, IP device, unlike LPR device, which is brilliant in every other way, um, is that it actually can handle link layer errors. 
Ah. Uh -huh. Right? Because LPR got device if it gets an error, it goes, huh? And it just sort of yeah. times out or it yeah. doesn't right, it doesn't handle too well. But um, was it Chris Young who did the IPT device? It's somewhere on OS4D. Eventually, I can show you a little later. I, might. I just, I just thought maybe they, they would have just okay, initially just like, uh, developed like uh, made something that similar to Cups. There was talk about somebody doing a boot and print port. Somebody wanted to do a Cups port, and it just never seemed to work out. And I know it's open source. No, no, so. I know, and I know a lot of people have asked them for it, but. Uh, yeah, but you gotta have somebody who's interested. Yeah, yeah. You don't got a guy who's working. You need to it's open. You gotta have a guy who's interested in doing it. I think the reason why Hyperion also is a matter of funding to put it in the OS is they can just get a post for whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. Which isn't really the most kind of response you're working Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, I home run cross platform. Everything over with each other between whether it be IP based or. Do you have a. What kind of structure do you want? Size of the uh, I run Linux, I run Unix, Mac. Well, if you've got a Mac or, or a Linux box, you can set up cups on those machines to act as a server. Uh, here we go. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. And then you can, whatever printer you whatever queues you set up in cups as a server, you can make them available. And then you can use your Amiga with like that device to connect to the cup server and think about that way. Yes. It's a thought. Okay. It's, it's, it's an idea that he's Yep. Oh, if, if you want to finish retail product, this is not the place to talk about it because these are the guys who like to write new things. Time for some hooks. Please. The dev, okay. These are developers who like to write things. So, you oh, use this is the uh, uh, How do you use hooks and reaction, basically? Right? Program and why we have them. Yes. yes. Why, why, why all the truck? Mm -hmm. Right? So, you know the purpose of the hook, first of all? Yes. That's the basics. <laughs> And it's strange kind of structure. Yeah. Yeah. So that was to interface to other languages other than C. Okay. That's what this is for? Yes. Oh, of course, because. Now it makes it sense. Yeah, because <laughs> these are all pointers to functions. Yes. So this thing is literally just, okay, I got it. Yeah. I got it. He's just moving the program counter over here. Yeah. That's all he's doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So your H your H entry was sometimes a, a setup function, okay, for like Pascal or something, and you you do a different stack frame, and then the sub entry would be the real function in that language, mm -hmm. right? And then you unroll it to get it back. So then data is just whatever. Okay, that that was their plan, and it, it worked fairly well, I think. So we, we inherited this. I mean, I could certainly see how you do this, like if you're mixing assembler and C. Yeah, they're doing yeah. a lot of that in 68K. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you'll find all the docs for these things talk about A0 and A2 and right. A6. Yeah. So, what's, that's, that's a good, important point. Okay. Why, why all that complexity? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then, oh, yeah, since, since, like Tony was saying, since 4.0, we follow the Sys5 ABI. So the A0, A1, A2 kind of stuff disappeared. But if you're working on three point something, then it still applies. Right? So you can still jump languages and do all sorts of funky stuff with them. And there's a little function call that takes care of it. So you, you know the basics of how to use the hook, I guess, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so that's that's the hook itself. Oh, and now you can allocate them dynamically if you need to. Doesn't have to be, but you know, maybe you want to. <laughs> so not nothing much there. So why the context of which it's called? Hmm? The context of which it's called? Oh yes, yes, that's what I was getting into. Yes. <laughs> Is that so, next? The context? Context is everything. Um, <laughs> so in a GUI, in a GUI, um, you have to know the context that you're in to know when your hook function is being called. You must know this. And if you don't know this, you can actually print it out by looking at the task name field. It's not directly task. But we, I can show you to get the task name out if you don't know how. I don't know how. No, it's kind of buried a little bit. 
Anyway, we'll, we'll get there. You can get the task name. Okay. You can get the process name if it's a DOS process, which is 99% of the time. Mm -hmm. Especially on, if you're on a GUI, DOS is going to be there. So, you have your hook, you have your context. Now, the context will be basically one of two things if you're in reaction world. It'll either be input device. Serious. Right. <laughs> do you know <laughs> input device? I do know input device. I believe it's a task. There it is. Running on priority 20 in the system. Pretty important. Oh, oh, nothing better. Okay, so you're either running at priority 20 on input device with a stack of <laughs> not very much. That's the context your hook will be called in. If, uh, if you select the menu items or if you're doing this or that, there's that option. Or you defer it somehow to a different context. Off of input device. Why isn't it not? Why is it not the object that is being interacted with? Well, that object is running on some kind of context, right? I thought it was just intuition. Is it, is it a thread? There is no intuition. There is no intuition. <laughs> okay. It's so, input device. Okay. So clearly, I've got a fundamental understanding issue here. Yes, that's that's the key. There's no intuition thread. There's no uh, presentation manager. There's if you want to go there. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's input device. Oh, it's yeah. just a library. Because what you're doing in your program is you're telling it how to draw everything, and then you give it to intuition. You hand over control. You no longer own that object. Okay. Right. Right. It's running under input device. What? Yes. There's no window manager here. No. That's the reason why you say input device in so many crashes. Yes. This is critical. <laughs> huh? Yes. <laughs> okay. Good. Good. Now you're 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 in the zone. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a terrible idea, right? <laughs> Nowadays. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. No, and priority twenty with a tiny step, right? <laughs> So we've come up with all sorts of ways to get off of input device. Okay. Because this is the original design. Okay? So your MUI apps, for example, have their own little MUI task, presentation manager, whatever you call it, right? Mm -hmm. That will take over. That's how they they uh, they function. So every event that comes in goes to this MUI context. Then your app goes. Does this thing, right? Mm -hmm. So you're getting off of input device, but you're always there first. Always there first. So reaction did the same thing. Said, okay, well, this is kind of weird. Let's get off of input device onto the actual application's context. That makes some sense. So it's a little better. It's, yeah. It doesn't have an in between, no, no presentation on it, but it's a little bit better, right? Mm -hmm. And there's little flags in layout gadget of all places that defer the layout to happen on your context. Like the the, uh, the buttons are now rendered on your context, you being uh, your application. I, I'm, well, you're saying, I'm, I gotta go look at the code example here. I'm, only I'm sorry, I don't mean to be so stupid. I just, no, no, this is weird. This isn't like working with X or anything. No, and it's on layout gadget because when you're creating a window class, your root gadget is always a layout gadget. Right. So that's what it's talking about. It's called the root layout gadget, the right. first one. Okay. The other ones don't really matter. It's the root one. Right? And so in here, in this little description, you'll see uh, all the wonderful explanation of what's going on. Right. This is the layout gadget on a dock? Yes. 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 Now, by default, you always want this on. Uh, I don't know why you wouldn't. Why would you want to run an input device, right? But it's a, an option. Um, it just seems counterintuitive that you've got this wonderful object system, yeah. and it's not actually the object that is initiating the callback. 
So when your callback, your your hook is called, it's on input to things. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Why? What? Why isn't it my application? Well, why isn't it? The, why isn't actually the GUI object itself? You've got why, whole, yeah. Why yeah, isn't it why? the object? Okay. It isn't. It isn't. So that's why there's rules around what you can do in your hook, right? Sometimes, depending on the context you've been called on. The it hook, took, took me a while. The hook to doesn't get you into the tasks. Uh, no, the, the, hook, task. the hook does not change context. It's uh, so it stays in whatever the calling. Yeah. So input device, layout, whatever. layout manager thing you made up or whatever you whatever you want to do. Yeah. It's very odd, right? Because I had all sorts of trouble with the, these hooks myself when I first started using this. Why is it crashing? Why can't I just draw two seconds worth of stuff? Right. Because I just took the system down, because I was on the input device. <laughs> Priority 20. <laughs> so. okay. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's very odd. History. <laughs> okay. So. So that's why wow. I said your question is pretty loaded. All right. Yeah. So, so now. I've created a window. Say you have a. Uh, what kind of um, hook is interesting? Uh, list browser hook. List browser menu. We could use the, for the menu class. That's. I don't understand menu class as well. Okay. They did list browser. List browser is fine. List yeah. browser is good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's other. So if I don't put that little defer in there, I'll be running an input device. And now my little rendering, my graphics functions, if I'm doing something, maybe animation even, it'll be on the wrong context. It's not my application. So I'm starving the rest of the system if I'm not careful here. Okay. Yeah, and it's a task on top of it, so I can't do any dots at all. I'm sorry, I'm going to be stupid, but I'm just trying to think through this. <laughs> All right, so I have my window, yeah. I've got my layout, I've got an instance of list browser. Okay. Now, in a given column or some cell of my list browser, I want to draw a string or I want to draw an image or whatever it is. Okay. So I create this render hook. Okay. And I've got, I get the RAST port probably from the object In, itself. Intuition, yeah. Right. We'll okay, it that's fine. So he gives me a pointer. Yeah. Now, he tells me, well, how do I tell it where to draw? That's the RAST port. It's called a RAST port. That's where you're drawing into. Yeah, I know, but that's the object I'm drawing into, right? Yeah, but you only get this much of that object to... Oh, I specify, when I get the port, yes. I actually specify the geometry. It gives you the bounds there. Okay. So okay. this that's is what you're allowed to render. Oh, okay. Okay. That's the bounds of the actual entry in yes. the list. Because the user could have made the window bigger, smaller, oh, okay. blah, blah, blah. All right. All right. 
All right, because I was kind of trying to figure out where, how an input device could possibly know where I want this stuff to start. Yes, yes, yes. So it gives you absolute coordinates in this case. Okay, okay, okay. And you Does just it, go, okay, I'm going into here. So it's almost well, it's like, not absolute. It's almost, <laughs> like the, it's almost like the GUI is just one big bitmap to yes. the system. Yes. Right? yes. Input device just sees this space. That's the way it was at the beginning. It doesn't know anything about yeah, was the where was the bitmap. Yeah. Just a white screen. It's just a Is just there any? Space. Yes. <laughs> Do you have to handle the clipping for staying inside your bitmap, or does the system? No, it did the clipping for me. So if you yeah. draw a line from there and go yes. 20 Absolutely. pixels but beyond that, I have to stay graphic. in the bounds. I have to stay in my bounds. What so you have to stay, you yeah. have to clip your graphics to stay within the yeah. bounds. Yes. You you they give you a 20 by 20 area. If you go to 20 to 100. You'll that the remaining, board. you'll overwrite the board. Yeah, I think and it'll it draw it out. So yeah. there's clipping and there's not clipping. Yeah, there's regions as well. The, re the regions to find the clipping. That happens during a refresh. I'd have to, I have to check again. I don't remember if it's automatic or not. The bounce might be informational, or if you have to do it. <laughs> I can't remember. Oh no, no, I didn't write it there. No one wrote it. Uh, doesn't say about clipping. Too bad. That's a that's a very important point. You find out very quickly. Yes. Oh yeah. Write a little example. Big giant circle or something. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, but I, what I'm wondering is, at what points yeah. did, does the system ever deal with it? Obviously, yes. not obviously, but I don't think I've very often seen something draw outside the borders and actually keep going into space off over the clock over there. No, because Usually what will happen is it'll yeah. overrun the gadget on the border or something like that. Yeah, yeah, and the, the region system takes care of that. Okay. It's called regions, yeah. But regions doesn't take care of this little raft yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Because you can define a region for anything. Isn't the window itself a region under yeah. the system? Yeah, that's... So it's not yeah. going to overgo the overrun the window. But it, I've seen it overrun you the can. gadgets of the window. Well, I mean, well, yeah, sure, because it the gadgets It depends on the rasp part, because that, that, right, that, that, yeah, that was the thing that I was staggering about yesterday like, when we went through the example, something. right? Was that <laughs> you know, all these all these buttons and gadgets and images, you think the slider is an object. It's, it's, a it's actually graphics. Right. The intuition is drawing. It's not, it's, it's so primitive. <laughs> <laughs> That's what makes it just light. <laughs> And dangerous. <laughs> it's it yeah. It, it lets you shoot yourself. Yeah, it does. Um, okay. I wonder if we had a diagram. Longing for some evolution. Uh, what it, was the diagram you're looking for? Layers. Oh. Um, oh wait, where was it? It was. It's under graphics. The layers library you put under the graphics section. A little more. Layers library. There you go. I thought there was a nice kind of diagram, but maybe not. Maybe under layers. Because <laughs> there's the window and then. <laughs> Layer and then a region of the layer. Oh, that would be nice. It's not going to be in your boots section. Yeah, it's nice. There's a there's there's a, there's a diagram somewhere where you got window class layout and the gadgets super class in the yeah. It'd Be nice to have a nice uh, visual mm -hmm. versus this text. This text. Mm -hmm. Blah 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 blah. Refresh. Blah blah blah. No, you no actual. Uh, Forgot the blah 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 code 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 blah blah blah. Yeah, code, see, code, there's code. no picture. <laughs> we should really have a picture. Yeah, anyway, sorry, I don't have a nice picture. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Oh, so I thought it does clip me, but I have to go back and check. The way I, I, the way to check for certain is to uh, to actually render into the RAS port beyond your bounds. There may, actually be, there, there may actually be a flagger or a, a, a tag that you get sent uh, yeah. when you instantiate the window, when you create a new window, window class. Because the RASP port has, oh, that's fun. You ever tried following that stuff? No. No? Oh. <laughs> that's fun. So the RASP port has a layer and a bitmap. Oh my god. You go to the layer, and the layer has the regions, I believe. <laughs> Kind of buried. I was hoping for a nice diagram of that. Back to back to the uh, question. So, when the callback is called, you must know your context. Is <laughs> it lesson there? Okay. For rendering, it's very important. For input, you might be on the input device task. 
right? It depends. How you're, if you're using window class, it'll defer it to your application nicely, right? And that's another aspect. Uh, is window class save that somewhere? Verify, keyboard control, there's lots of wonderful stuff. Okay. They're actually, what that's called. Yeah, WM handle input method. So when you get signaled, you probably saw those loops. When you get signaled, you call this method. Well, now you're on your context, you're on your process. Okay. Right? So then your any hooks that are in that input will be called on your process context. Okay. Right? That's for just uh, keyboard plugs, mouse plugs. Well, typically that's what you're doing. You've got to wait when you're waiting yes. for some intuition. Yeah. But it's important to know the rendering may be off of your context, which is strange. Well, unless you're using a window class, then it's on your context. Yeah, and you put that defer layout stuff all onto your task. You want to make sure it's all deferred to you. Yeah, but I might have a whole bunch of different layouts. That's okay, as long as the root layout is deferred. Okay. You want to make sure. Because the layout calculation itself, before the rendering, could be done on the input device too. Like where it's doing all the coordinate calculations? Right. Yeah. It used to do it on the input device all the time. Well, that doesn't make too, I mean, that, that doesn't seem too odd that the input device would be responsible for determining yeah. the coordinates it's of okay. the pointer. It's okay. But it can get heavy when you have thousands of GUI objects and you're sizing your window, you know, start uh, right. chugging along, right? It looks ugly. And users start complaining. What do you look at me for? <laughs> I don't know, Paul. Why am I looking at you? <laughs> so, yeah. Clock tree, as I recall, has some hooks in there because you're you're doing some drawing. It's on the wiki too, somewhere. <laughs> yeah, no, but I mean, I remember it from previous uh, the operative word somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's the trouble with the wiki. There we go. It's all on the wiki. Well, I mean, the one thing which <laughs> would be helpful from a beginner's perspective of this is if, you know, you get into the graphics regions and immediately gets into the technical nitty gritty of regions are allowed, the application and clipping a rack kind of, it would be better if it was like one step back from that to say, here's the big picture. <laughs> yeah. You know, and yeah. The, okay, you've got rasters, regions, this, this. These are how the pieces fit together in the big picture and then go into each yeah. one of those. We haven't arranged it that way yet. That's one of the things that was quite well done in the old days with how to program the Amiga back in the 80s. Yeah. 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 Books with large pictures showing the lights yeah. and things. Yeah, yeah. Because our, our, um, basically it followed exactly what the RKRM, RKRMs yeah, yeah. did initially, mm -hmm. which right. isn't what we want anymore. No, it's all text. Right, it just says kernel, library, right, right, right. resources, right? I know. That's nice, but it's not what you want, is it? <laughs> well, I, it's kind of, it, it, on one level, what I found cool yeah. about the RKMs is you could almost start, and I don't remember which one it was, I think it was libraries, but you could start at the beginning and start working your way through, and the text described it. You knew kind you of page a, seven, and the next yeah. page was eight, and you and could will say, look sequentially, at that. Yeah. and it was you know, sequential because it's a book. Right. Yeah. And, and and you could kind of work your way through it, and that at least was not that steep a hill to climb. And that, that order is still there, too. I, I understand. Yeah. But you have to go top to bottom, and it's like, well, right. no, I just want to know about this. Right. And that's the problem is while you're trying to do something, you want to yeah. jump into one thing, and now all of a sudden you're kind of like in the middle of the book and trying to figure out how who Bob is. And that's, <laughs> that's why we have these breadcrumbs, as they're called. Yeah. This thing up here, yep, yep, yep. which tries to help you get backwards, <laughs> but it, it, that's not that taking help. you from page thirty-two to no. thirty-one. It's taking you from yeah. page thirty-two to the beginning of the chapter to the beginning of the book. Yeah, there's no uh, narrative, if you will. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's why when I'm clicking in any wiki, I get kind of lost. 
Where, what was I? What was I here for again? Why? Yeah. Why? <laughs> it's like reading Wikipedia. It's like you start going there, and then next thing I have six tabs open. Well, How the hell did I get the same twenty five? <laughs> it's the same engine as Wikipedia. No, I know. No, I know. It's, it's so close, and it even looks the same. Yeah, it yeah. is. No, I know. Right. And I, and I know that. But I mean, I know that's yeah. the problem with wikis is you just yeah. kind of go down a normal flow. Uh, yeah, rat hole. Rat holes, they yeah. call them. Yeah. You're, you're done this one, and then you're like, well, where was it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, oh, well, this looks good. Oh, okay, yeah, on that one. But shit, what happened on my Saturday? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the, and I find it difficult to in here, too, because I usually have three or four tabs open. Oh, yeah. Because I want to know about the hook, but I also want to know about this and this and this, and I want to join it together, right? <laughs> but they're in totally separate art house. Right. <laughs> and they're not easily linked to each other, either. Yeah. Although there, there have been some editors that we've had that have put links and references I, more I, and more. Yeah, and I've done a few of them. Like, you, you, oh, like, you have too? Yeah. Uh, and it's like, but I've only got like, that's the thing which I found. Like, what? I've got the corner of the elephant here. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, that's that's why uh, when we started the project, I said, I need as many volunteers as possible. Because <laughs> you know it's coming. <laughs> it's enormous effort to keep the documentation up to date, right? So, did I answer your question about hooks? You did for the GUI. Okay. Uh, if you can see where you're using it here, what I can't understand is why. So, I, I'm just pulling up proc info, right? And you're using hooks here because you're iterating through the processes. And you do here. It's very funky. I didn't understand. Yes, okay. So, as you're iterating through the processes and you're getting the information, you've got this little thing called save, save process info. But you don't call it. It's not like you call it directly, you've got a hook to it somehow. I don't know why. Um, so you're looking at process scan? No, I'm looking at proc info.c. It's your code. Yes, yes, but it starts with this. Yes, okay. Yeah, it starts with this. There's a hook here. Right. So I get, there's a hook call for every process that it encounters. Why? Because that's how they designed it. Yeah, why? why that was, that's the kind of thing that I don't quite understand why we need these things. Oh, why? Well, then. Why we, do you need it? You can do the hook in any language. So we've got all these things because people were thinking about mixing yes. and matching languages. And plus, it's the standard now, right? If I put a function pointer. Yeah. Well, now it depends on the ABI. Now, the ABI is not changing right now, but they, they want to be super flexible, right? So. We always put hooks in it, and any external facing API. Okay, fair enough. It yes. just seems that, that this is so low level, the tool chain wouldn't handle this for me. Ah, uh, yes. I mean, yeah, I'm, an argument I'm, for that. I'm yeah. very lazy, and I don't, I just, I, it just seems a strange way that. It's an extra step. Yeah. Yeah, it's an extra uh, step. On the Unix like yeah. operating system, I'm doing it as stuff. Right? I just say, here's a point of a function. Because the API right. doesn't change, yeah. <laughs> well, it can over time, right? And then yeah, things break. A long time. Yeah, yeah. But, and then they break, yeah. right? And then you take a deal with it. Yeah. But yeah. this is, and it's not like our ABI has, well, the ABI has certainly changed. It has to have done because the, the, bi yeah, the binary formats, it's, yeah. it's changed. So, I mean, how does the hook help you with the, with the format changing? Because you're using that hook structure, at least the application doesn't need to change because it's using the same API, the same structure. It makes the call, and then the hook can deal with the change. That's the idea. Yeah. Yeah. The hook can do with the glue. It can, it can handle. It the can glue. have the glue inside. Okay. Right. You're you're switching registers to do this. It, it could do that. Right. Right. But it, it also appears. seems that somebody's actually written a secondary function somewhere to set you up. Yes. And do whatever data translation or whatever else has to happen. Yes. That was the, so the pattern has continued. So you still have to write all this extra. So even if you even if you have the scenario with the with yes, time for, yeah. you still have to you write still have code to, to handle yeah. these changes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Fair enough. So I think I think I understand why now. I just yeah it might not have been the greatest decision, <laughs> but <laughs> it's done. But I just yeah. see them everywhere. When you're yes. working with DOS, you've got hooks all over the place. Yes. When you're working with the GUI, you've got hooks all over the place. It's just 
You can't just say, here's an A pointer to a function, right? No, you if, may if, not. Right? Or, or, or a pointer to an object, right? Now you do whatever you're going to do and give it to this. You could probably write a macro to hide it, I bet. But I, it's, not, it's, not, it's not like it's a norm. I'm just, I'm just, it, these yeah. types of things really get to the nitty gritty of the design philosophy. Yes. And that's the kind of thing I'm interested in. So yeah, so that's, that's why it's the way it is. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. When, when the API was designed for this, it said, oh, well, let's use a hook. That's the most flexible versus a function pointer. Because the function pointer would have had to have been. Well, you'd have to choose your arcs and you can't exactly. change your mind later. Right. Yeah. Well, except now then they come up with tags. Which yep. did yeah, you can put a tag them. list in. Yeah. Right. And, and then. So, yeah, it's another way, right? But then again, the tag list yeah. is not part of the original design. Not originally. Not the, the 1.0, no. That's I right. think it was a 2.0 feature. Or I something. think so, yeah. yeah. So that was their way of like trying to make function calls more flexible. Yes, so you could change your mind. Yes. Yeah. It's all about uh, being able to change your mind. <laughs> well, you know, look, it means that applications don't necessarily break. If they're yeah. sending out their tags, mm -hmm. and there are more tags added, they can keep working. Yep. So there you go. Okay. Make sense? Yes, it does. Thank you very much. In, in theory, in the hook structure, the user data could be a tag list. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So sure. the new Sometimes it is. Future compatibility Sometimes. there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Could be almost anything. It's just a right. pointer to whatever. It's a pointer. You want. Right. It's, it's strange because it, it gives you a pointer to the hook itself too, which has another field which is data. <laughs> and <laughs> scores. Because <laughs> it's <laughs> fun. <laughs> can you I put it? all sorts of junk in there. You can write all this kind of code. Can you give an example of where you would need that sort of nested data? Well, what does it what does it buy you? Does it help you usually like, determine the callback tree? Or sometimes you can, you can put a pointer to the uh, root uh, process, for example. Maybe you want the parent process, not the child process. You can put anything in there. So it depends. Totally on what I'm doing, what I put in there. It's just a free field. It's a free field that you're going to get. Yeah. Use however you want. Yeah. 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 So the user data here, and then you have the hook field as well. So you have two fields. No, I don't remember what I did in in proc tree. Oh. Um, I might have used it for something. Did I? No, no. I guess so. <laughs> you have this thing in the shit. No, not really. Okay. So I just didn't bother with it that day. <laughs> you never know what you might need it for. Sometimes it's convenient to just put like an integer there, and sometimes it's yeah, and all a you pointer can, to something. When you larger. when you created it with uh, sys object tags, you just said make me a hook. Yes. The hook entry is this done. And no data field. Okay. Yeah, so I didn't use it in that case. Yeah. yeah. There you go. So <laughs> sometimes yes, sometimes no. So. Okay. It's kind of nice and it's kind of not nice because it's extra work. Mm -hmm. Air, you can get a lot of hooks. So how did you handle this going back to your SATA driver, right? You got all the stuff from in Linux. Yes. So I imagine there's all Basically. sorts of things where you've got objects that've got fun pointers to functions that you all, use call, but all, all over the place. place. Right. So you're not going to go back and replace them all with hooks, surely. Oh yeah. No, no, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Or uh, it shall be the amigo. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> yes. So in reality, unless unless you're interacting with some part of the uh, the system, yeah, the DOS library or intuition or reaction class or whatever it is, you don't have to use a hook. You can continue to yeah. do it the simple way. The other way. The other way. <laughs> Not gonna let you say it's simple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but see, it is simple. I don't have to create a structure. You said the all this stuff. The other review. This. Every single one of these is a function pointer. Mm -hmm. Imagine that's it. Hook, 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 hook. Come on, it's a simple search for place. What are you talking about? He's 
not even gonna go there. <laughs> I'm not gonna let him take the bait. <laughs> Troll. Come <laughs> <laughs> yeah. on, you make Kobe look so hard. <laughs> So th there you go. There's some, some new information probably for you. It is. Yes. Thank you very much. So, Steve, it, what would be the recommended way of getting off, let's say you call this hook from your program and something event occurs in your system for whatever reason, you don't yep. decide to use the window class. So you're now in the input device or whatever task. Yep. You will use it. Your hook gets called. How, what's the simplest way to get off the input task and back to your application? For, for uh, intuition? I guess. I mean, let's say an intuition event comes in. Well, I think it's about most I've common example. Well, what I do normally is I copy what I need yeah. from the hook to data. another message and reply to intuition. That's reply to normally intuition do. or not reply to yeah. your own message port for the application? No, I, I take what I need, yeah. uh, store it over here, reply to intuition, then I take that data and I package it up and send it to whatever I wanted to send it to. Like my process, okay. my tabs. So, within the input tab device, you get this hook, yeah. get the information you need, reply back to intuition, say if the hook's done, yeah. that data but then still when the input task yeah. is sent to your application's message, here you go, then the input device goes on its own, your yeah. task gets its message, and that goes on its own. That's what I do normally. Okay. Okay. It gets ugly when you're trying to synchronize. Right, yeah. yeah. That's when it's just horrible, horrible, horrible. Um, I've tried that before. So, so what would be an example <laughs> of where you're trying to synchronize? If you're like getting a whole series of messages oh, coming rendering. in, books right. coming in. So you're, you're resizing the window. Right. Intuition is doing do 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 do. Yeah. Now your task is over there, and it's just getting messages in and out from this mechanism. It gets it whenever it gets it, right? right. Yeah. And you're you're always behind, right? Yes. yes. It's like oh well, it was this, but now it's this. It's uh, it's right because he's resizing the window. Right. right. So some people will show an X. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Just show them an X. And then wait till they get the last message. Or and sometimes you just get nothing, right? It'll just right. be blank while they're moving it. Sometimes you get garbage. It depends on the program or what they. Put there. Well, and, then and the, some try desperately to synchronize it, which is just you're not going to win. PDF. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, no, funny. I shall synchronize it. I will win. And you know? PDF actually gets the rendering right, but then just locks the window for 30 seconds. Yeah. And the user is like, "What the heck?" Uh, yeah. yeah. And the more they do it, the worse they're making it. Yeah. And the more they move it, like <laughs> when Paul moves it even faster, it gets worse. And he's like, "Oh, faster then." <laughs> My partner, not on an Amiga, you know, I've noticed when he's waiting for something, he starts clicking in the window, and I'm going, stop that! That's you're just, exactly you're just the, making more things happen! See, all the other systems do the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. But they usually defer to a very low-level task, which means it's even worse, right? Right. And you get that uh, ghosting or whatever, the trails. Oh, right. Remember, yeah, yeah. you get a trail effect? Sometimes you like it. But. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, look, it's yeah. following me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Windows does that, I think, doesn't it? Yeah, it used to be very bad for that. Yeah. Yeah. Over the years, they've tried to minimize it. Or they sometimes even got ghosting on the pointer, for goodness sake. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah. Really? oh yeah. 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 That took a long time to get rid of, you probably know. Yes. Yeah. It's, well, it's a difficult problem. Fortunately, I isolated instances, but then I see and say, oh look, this crap's still here. Yeah. Go away. Yeah. <laughs> so most graphics cards these days give you a hardware sprite. That's why you don't get to ghost man. <laughs> Hardware's done it. Once hardware takes over, people don't notice it. We do that in, uh, in OS 4 too. It's hardware sprites. Why wouldn't you if the hardware is going to do it? <laughs> but then it makes it difficult to do that effect if you really want it back. <laughs> Get the animated pointer nonsense. Remember that fad? I think it's over now. It was cool. Yeah. Oh, it was We still have it. Anyway. <laughs> 
You could be typing in the shell. Instead, you're animating your pointers. <laughs> 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 you didn't even get into the whole animation within the shell. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, the dancing cursors. The dancing cursor of the spinning slashes. <laughs> <laughs> I, got a, I got a shell window open right here, and it does it all the time. It's fine. Like a little spinning cursor. I'm, like, still... <laughs> I'm sure Tony will put that in the next version. <laughs> Animated cursors. <laughs> Tony. Just imagine how you drive him insane. Hurts. <laughs> 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 <Her. laughs> <laughs> uh, don't you two start talking. <laughs> Snickering. <laughs> oh goodness, goodness. You know the audience. It's a cool thing. Does the cursor off and says it? So just on the topic. Oh, no, no. So anything else uh, you wanted me to poke into? No uh, standing here? No more questions? Pretty quiet, Dave. <laughs> All right. Do right. you want to go through prayer about the device? Oh, no. What a horrible piece of work. You're evil. Yes, yes I did. <laughs> that, that hasn't uh, gotten out of the... Uh, it's still... He's, yeah, it's very... It's a, because it's got all, this, it's all these different um, uh, commands and things. This is when they, the company made the printers as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. They made printers? Yes. I mean, I know the one that was like a daisy. Wheel. Did they actually make them or they, did, did yeah. they just put their name on them? Oh, yeah, and so on. They made them. Yeah. Then they'd have to have a driver for that printer when it went on sale. Because they've got all these commands here like they, they script they, on. They had like one specialty printer that always went on sale with their name brand on it that connected to thing. Yeah. Well, you wanted the monitors too, right? They never made monitors. No such thing as a Commodore monitor. But it, you know, <laughs> Commodore Brandon monitor. <laughs> yeah, there's lots of stuff. Man. <laughs> okay, well, uh, I'll, uh, I'll see if Hans wants to uh, start up. Sure. You want to get going? Yeah. yeah okay. Great. Okay. If you don't mind. I don't know what you need. Uh, are you going to plug into the projector? Uh, well, all I've got is a USB. Oh, you got okay. So you want to try to present with uh, PDF files or something, or you want to um, use online? Well, it depends on what people want to do. See, I've got to use it just uh, Hollywood. Didn't have a chance to turn into a PDF. Okay. So hopefully it'll just work. Otherwise, we will find out. <laughs> by the way. <laughs> so you can have my my position. <laughs> Where's my notebook? So, uh, any questions about the setup here? So it's a SAM 460. Oh, you need that. Yes. Maybe USB. It's it right on the front. Show the front of this one. Yeah. One of these buttons. There you go. <laughs> Cross your fingers, nothing explodes. Oh, that would be fun to watch. Just this monstrosity. You can't see through it. You can't see through it, by the way. Do you want me to pull oh, it down on the floor? This is not shady. You're taller than I am. I, I have to keep doing this. Yeah. Just you want me to pull it down on the floor? Actually, the problem with the light box in the end. I can't pass this light box. I guess before I start, I just want to know. Yeah, I wouldn't mind. What do people want me to cover? Just be careful. The variations on the, on, on the drivers? Oh, between Wolf 3D and Wolf 3D Nova? Yeah. Or? Well, and especially what the version numbers add to. Version. Because, have to. Like, you know, I, 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 different things, I'm confused about which is which, which is for what product. Ah, I go back to the beginning. What is yeah, 3D Nova? What, what, what is, is it? it? Let's go to the beginning. Yeah. What is it? What is 3D Nova? Yes, I think that's the question, really. Ooh. Okay. Like, what, why is there two of them? Why is there two of them? There's okay. more 3D and Nova. What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, basically, Wolf 3D was. I think it was created in 1998. 
uh, based entirely on how graphics cards of the day worked. Um, so amongst other things, it really was just a glorified rasterizer. So most of the calculations happened on the CPU. And we've been stuck with that for years. Um, whereas, let's see if it Yes, yes, I saw. Come clear. Yeah. It'll take a little while. Let's go. Do we need a different screen mode? We need a bigger mode, please. I created a night just in my default screen, um, which is nineteen twenty. Oh, uh, it doesn't scale, does it? Oh, that's the problem with the projector. Yeah, it's a VGA projector, so it won't scale like a DDI. Uh, I'll, I'll create you a new mode. That might be the first thing to do here. Uh, help me every bit. single. Oh, that's my fault. <laughs> Sorry. It's going to just bring up the other Yeah, we, we should give it a, uh, a dismount. Force dismount that one. Control open. Oh, right, this one, isn't it? So this, this. There it is. Get that out of there. Where is he? Unknown, unknown. Ooh, which one is it? That makes sense. Well, that one's me. Yeah, yeah. You've got a lot of regions. Yeah, that's it. Gone, <laughs> gone, <laughs> gone. It's not going to force it. Nobody, nobody used it. It's UD0, I think. It's the monitor. Try to get rid of them. Um, Apologies. <laughs> Okay, so Ollie's doing it. Basically, Wolf 3D Nova is designed to closely match today's hardware. So it's, it's fully based on running shaders on the GPU, which means we can transfer, as far as graphics is concerned, we can transfer almost all the calculations across running on the GPU, which frees up the CPU for game logic and stuff like that. That's the core idea behind it. Why don't you just reinsert it? Yeah, just as, why don't you just decide to solve it or nil? Or assign it to RAM disk or nil or something, yeah. What was that resolution you need? 1920. Somewhere. I'm not sure that uh, projector is going to support that. No, it doesn't. Okay, you know what? I'll just open up the overview. Image. It doesn't on my card, apparently. Uh, what's this? This one? That one, yeah. I'll try it. Oop. Fortunately, it won't let me test it. I have to reboot to get it. Yeah. That's why I was going for it. So I saved it. Now I can reboot. And then we'll be back. Wait, you want to test it first? <laughs> 